What's going on guys, Derek in here, back on the Roller Breaker Season 5 video, sorry that clap was a little loud, um, I turned up my mic volume just because I'm going to be talking a little softly today, just because I didn't really feel that hot, had a stomach bug this entire day, I was like puking pretty much the entire day, didn't really get to do much, but I did play some, um, rank matches here, and in this video we're going to be checking out my Raider ma uh, rank matches, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, the rewards in case you didn't see my initial, uh, rank kind of overview video. So these are going to be uh, the shirt rewards. If you get Z5, you'll get um, Fuse Amasu, and if you get Z5 for Survivor, you get uh, Jocko. So both these shirts actually look pretty neat. I was just never a big fan of the the orange ones, just hitting Z rank. They're not that great. But you'll be getting, I believe, like 30,000 Zenny if you hit Z5 for either Raid or Survivor, so that's 60,000 total. And then if you get both, you'll get 30 tickets in total. You get 15 tickets each for the following season. So uh, Also, they changed it where uh, Raiders their um ranking up or ranking down situation is more so impacted by uh the wins and losses as opposed to the actual medals so uh that is something that i didn't exactly keep in mind in my matches but anyways uh instead of me just yapping let's pull up some of the games Alrighty, so this is uh my first uh raider match i opted to play goku black just because Ooh, Black is the Raider I'm going to be playing the most. I mean, just because, uh, you know, he's the most recent Raider to come out, and I still have to level him up. And the only Raider besides Goku Black that I don't have at level 100 is Ginyu. And I'd much rather play um, them than uh, Ginyu at this time. Right, let me see. I can turn the volume a little bit on this, actually. Give me a sec, sorry. Okay, I think that should be a little bit better in terms of the volume. I'll, I'll adjust it in case it gets a little too loud. But um, pretty much, uh, I got Waterfront Warzone here, which is a pretty good map for Raiders because there isn't that much cover um, for Survivors on this map. They actually got a pretty lucky uh, spawn for civilians here. I grabbed my first one there. Um, also, another reason why I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, yeah, I w I'm sick today, so that's why there wasn't any live commentary for these matches. I just want to kind of focus on the gameplay. Uh, literally, as I'm recording this, I'm a little nauseous, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, I'm good enough to record at the very least. So I'm pretty much just going to be yapping here, talking about uh, what I did good, what the survivors that did good here. Just because I um, had two very different outcomes for both of these matches. I recorded two matches, and um, I think this this uh, match took me about Raider Priority 2 to get, where the other one I think took me about 4 or 5. So um, that was just really changed on that end. And I believe everybody in here was A rank. I don't think I had any S's, uh, because I'm an, I'm an A rank as well, so... The world shall be so I opted to destroy. Let's not turn this down a little bit. I opted to destroy um, area E here. Typically, the reason why I like to do it on this map, if there is a situation where like area D and E are both found, is just because it's a little more awkward for survivors to get to area D, just because they would have to go all the way around depending on where they are. Just be a little frustrating for them. Uh, here I hear a sieve. Uh, you'll notice I'm actually a lot better about hearing the sieves when I'm actually not live. Or like recording just because all I have is my eyes and ears, right? So here I key sent somebody. Um around here. Uh they kinda got cucked by melees here just because they got uh caught in a close space and they didn't get knocked out of the building, so I was just able to melee them like three times in a row. <laughs> Felt a little bad for this guy, but it is what it is. Uh they do I think they are able to are they able to drop those ship out? I think they do, but they uh, got out of it for some reason. I think they should have just stayed in the ship. I guess they just assumed that I was going to leave him. Let me uh, take this guy out here. And I uh, just for some of the machines here, see if I can find any sieves. I believe I find another sieve shortly. So at this point, um, everybody on the team has dragon change except one player who's still level zero. And they planted the D key. And every key besides A. So I see this guy. Probably should have just called him a hog early there. I catch the key over here. Transform. Now we fight a little bit. Let's see what a stun. I actually did a pretty nasty combo here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna rewind this so you guys can see what happened. So essentially what happened here is uh they landed a melee on me. I popped my break strike, and I actually comboed it into a vanishing kick. You can do that. You can combo vanishing kicks into your break strike as Goku Black. And the Kamehameha also landed as well. I don't believe the Kamehameha into a Vanish Kick is true. It just so happened to work for me there. So that's just definitely something you guys can uh, try to utilize uh, in your matches. Sorry, the, the bar isn't going away there. There we go. 
Okay, so I pick up my level 3, because I'm like, man, I'm not going to do the level 2 strat. I'm, I'm, I have a pretty solid lead here. Everybody is, like, level 2 or 1. Um, so if I take out a couple survivors here, I should be pretty good. So I hear somebody getting um, smacked up by Zamasu, and they actually use Jacko shit to escape. And I think I actually just catch him with this Kamehameha. And I grab um, some juice off of them. Indeed. So at this point, they found the A key. And then I opt for destroying B, just because there's somebody that needs to be res there. So that's going to reduce their uh, bleed out timer. Um, but unfortunately, they did plant uh, C, meaning that all they have to do is just plant A immediately after I destroy B. And I think that's exactly what they do with time patrollers. Uh, they don't, actually. They don't. So I go back to this area. I see that they're rezzing over here. Probably should have just popped on my hall instead. I think they're a little more instant. Probably would have caught that guy. As opposed to doing um, the blade move. So that person dies. And I chase this guy. Again, yeah, I probably should be using supers here. Um, I guess I just assumed that uh, the key blast would be a little bit faster. So now I'm only two executions for, away from my level four. Pitiful. Uh, at least three play, uh, players have been executed, so at this point, if I catch them again, they'll be, like, dead dead. Yeah, that guy escapes with Jacko Ship as well. Pop that. So we save all the sieves. So at this point, I just gotta be mindful of where, uh, they could be playing the A key. <laughs> I did not know what that guy was doing when his Jacko Ship just, uh, going around. So now they finally pick up the Super Transfer. I imagine they were saving. Super transfer that way, um, they have it as healthy as possible for super time machine phase, which was smart, definitely a smart play on their part. I don't think I land any of the blade on this guy, really. So I fight this guy a little bit, he completely dodges this super. I figured because his back was towards the wall, that might have hit. But I actually did a lot of good damage to him. I probably could have just honestly focused him down, just took him out really early here, but um, I did want to like be mindful of my surroundings just because they could be playing the key if I focus somebody. I have some monster helping me out here as well, which is pretty nice. I get this guy. Unfortunately, I did not get the, the, the advantage kick combo on that fella. So here I'm trying to will this guy down a little bit. I'm taking some damage, but not that much damage for anybody concerned. And I think they get the A key pretty soon here, because now I'm focusing this guy pretty hard. Okay. <laughs> I talk a little smash at this guy. He's pretty much almost done. A couple more key blasts and he'll be uh, done skis. Super does not hit him, but they plant the key while I was distracted, which was uh, pretty smart. I don't know where the key was. It could have been the little cave area, but that break strike misses him off. And um, I think this is where I kind of start to misplay. I think what I instantly should have done was got the Super Time Machine at 75%, at least after taking this guy out. But I think I got a little too confident in this game. You'll see uh, how that kind of led to my downfall later. <laughs> see this guy as well. I'm too busy like trying to talk smack with my voice lines. <laughs> okay. Got this guy. Take him out. And this guy is somebody I noticed that uh, will be completely eliminated from the game if I execute him. So I try to take him out just so he's gone from the match. And now he's gone. Now the play I do here, and I think this was a massive misplay on my part, just because to be fair, typically with any other raider, this really wouldn't matter. And you would put yourself in a better situation or position. But because I'm playing Goku Black and a super transfer spawns by acquiring my level 4, um, I kind of gave them uh, a better opportunity to defend the Super Time Machine here, where I should have just got the STM to 75%, then came back, and I uh, got the execution or got somebody else. Because now, uh, the match has the potential to be a little more difficult. Um, I think I, yeah, I also go for area to, oh no. I pop this, this is absolutely nothing, dude. <laughs> it does absolutely nothing. I think I do area destruction as well. Because I see somebody going for the res over there. I think I at least first get this to 25 Yeah, I think I get this to 25, then I offer area destruction, yeah. So now the SDM is at 50%. Uh, 
But I figure, do this, that's gonna eliminate that player. They're probably not gonna be able to res him in time. Yeah, and they're not. And then here, honestly, I think I should have just focused on killing these guys instead of playing SDM. So, but I guess maybe I just want to get it. Oh my god, that was a lot of damage. Wow. That guy probably had souls. So this guy is vanish dancing here. And I'm just like, word up. Y'all can, <laughs> can have fun. This guy had another transformation. At any point now, the super transfer should be spawning. So I get this guy and they're dead. And uh, they get the super transfer here, so they pretty much have 50% to go. So this is a fairly even game. But um, they do have other players here. Uh, so this guy, I think, dodges most of this. I should have just went to kill this guy here. I don't think I do, for whatever reason. Yeah, he pops Barry, and I just focus with super transfer. Should have went to kill that guy, because he, he, I pretty much had him dead to rights. Because now he's somebody's getting sodas and getting supplies. Because if this was a 1v1 situation, it would have been a lot easier here. Uh, this guy's running a break strike. I am very conflicted about survivors being able to have break strikes, which I think is annoying, especially with like the low cooldowns that they have. So I'm trying to get this to 75 as fast as I can. Um, I don't know if I am able to get to 75. There, my melee just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't happen. Now there's three people I have to deal with now. That guy interrupts my Blaze of Judgment, which is pretty bad. And here, uh, some shenanigans kind of start to happen with the Super Transfer. It gets like a triple banish kick on me. It was like really crazy, but... Um, this is looking like a pretty bad situation here. The STM is getting very close, and the Super Transfer is very, very healthy. Yeah, and it's not even close to 75 anymore, the Super Time Machine. It is where, like, a situation where, like, that just wasn't hitting the guy. I catch him, but he has um, that move, and then my melee doesn't land, which is a fantastic, really awesome. Pop that, and then, yeah, he gets another Vanish Kick on me, and then I think he vanishes kick, Vanish Kicks me again, and I'm dead. So, <laughs> I think I could have played a little bit better at the end, at least eliminating one more player. But I think the optimal way to have played this... I was so pissed during this. I think I just canceled the recording here, but let's see how much I ranked up. I actually ranked down off of that. So uh, let me rewind a little bit just to see what the ranking looked like. But um, I think the optimal thing for me to do there was to get the STM to 75%, then get my level four. I kind of gave them too much of a window by getting my level four early. I could have played a little bit better there, but you know, the guy having uh, after image plus uh, you know, the other guys being there to help him, Definitely kind of cocked me a little bit, but you can see like my medals weren't even that bad, but it seems like the battle results are really what impacts uh, you ranking up and ranking down. So this was my first Raider game. I was really, really pissed. I'm not going to lie. I was super triggered by taking this out because I thought I was like chilling throughout this entire match and at the very end, Super Transfer uh, cleaned up. So GG's to this group. The Super Transfer played pretty well. Uh, I, really I really hate break strikes on Survivors, bro. I don't know. I just, I find them super annoying just because... I don't know. I just feel like maybe maybe I'm a salty. Maybe it's just a salt coming out. But let me know, cause do you think survivors should have break strikes, dude? Because think about it, some survivors can they can equip two, which is kind of crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and I'll look at the other match that we had. This was the second match that I had. Um, obviously didn't rank up for the last game since I took an L. Uh, but I think these survivors, I think there might have been one S player in here actually. I don't think I checked the levels uh when I was loading up. By channeling my divine rage. But I think they did have one um, S player in here. You. So I'm going to lower the volume just a little bit. Sorry the volume is a little, because those little loud or anything like that. I'm like, I'm like super loopy, super out of it. I want to get you guys some rank matches in just so you guys can see if you feel like the games have changed um, or not. Um, I mean, I don't really feel like that last game was super sweaty. I feel like I could have just played a little bit better. And I also could have played a little more optimally. I gave uh, those survivors essentially two chances by getting my level three and my level four and i took out the super transfer in my level three and i pretty much had that game dead the rights dude i got so scared when this happened i'm like bro please please don't i want to go to bed soon bro please 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 let me just send my raider game please breakers please <laughs> so um i pretty much get uh, my run back fully here same map almost the same exact spawn and i immediately start looking for sieves 
Zamasu pretty much only needs three sieves with his auto evolve uh, mechanic maxed out. And uh, take out the soda machine, and I hear another sieve over here. And I think I make a dash over to the city. They get the B key within 30 seconds of the match. Very epic. Very, very epic indeed. I mean, that, that could be luck. I mean, might not necessarily be a key radar. Um, B isn't like the biggest area in, on this map in particular, so, you know, it could have just been a luck of the draw. So I get this save, and I get my level 2 pretty quickly here. Um, typically in this situation, I would destroy area B, but I end up, like, they got the key there so fast, I highly doubt they, like, really cooked on it, and I'm, like, right here. So let me see what they're doing at B first. See if I can find some sieves. I have a feeling like, ah, uh, they really didn't get to check out B that much. So I hear slash see the sieve, grab them really quick. And then I make my way over to B, use my dash, cancel it so I don't get the end log animation. And I think there is a sieve in this area. And there is. So I actually opt to destroy area A here just because on this map, area A is very good. It's very survivor friendly. Uh, it's just very big, and there's a lot of uh, places to hide, a lot of levels to it. So I just opt to take it out. And I'm thinking maybe this will cut off some of the supplies. Maybe uh, a lot of them get to check out A that much. I think, you know, when it comes to destroying areas, you have two kind of, like, thought processes to go through. Do I destroy this area to eliminate supplies early for survivors? Or do I destroy this area to uh, make sure they don't get the key bonus from planning it? So here I see a couple survivors. I actually, now that I'm watching this back, I did not see that uh, survivor in the back right corner. I see that I'm literally about to get my level 3 and I hear this sieve. I'm like, alright, peace out, buddy. I'm just going to pick up my level 3. What am I going to do, like, chasing you like a headless chicken? So now they're actually getting keys pretty quickly. Uh, the key rushing is real. And they plant B. So uh, I think I opt to destroy D again for similar... Uh, actually, no, I destroy E. I destroy E this time. I think I might have did that just because that might have been the, the, the latest key that they got. I think I just want to destroy an area really, really fast here. Because uh, especially with Goku Black, I want them to uh, have the least amount of uh, STM startup rate as possible. So now the Super Transfer uh, will probably be out shortly. This guy uh, has his Immortal Champion pop in like the worst position like possible. He got really cocked there. I got pretty lucky with that one. So at this point, um, I kind of have to camp C. Uh, C gives me a really good overview of D as well. Um, the only two places where D can be placed, actually I see this guy, like a little ant that he is. Pop my Akameha, I don't opt to chase because I don't want to chase when they have the, yeah, they can plant D like by that cave, or it's like behind uh, on like a little hill. I just start destroying some buildings in case some people are uh, hiding in buildings, take out the soda machine. So I'm kind of like soft camping this body. I assure you I'm not intentionally doing it. It's really just so I have a good lay of the land of C and D. And uh, really the best way for me to have that best lay of the land is from this area. So I think the key for D is actually right in front of that cave. If I don't realize it until uh, a little late. And I think I could have defended the area a little bit better here. Sorry, just taking a sip of water. So I see somebody behind um, a little block over there. Don't hit him with the second super attack, unfortunately. So as you saw, they are starting to plant the key on D. Unfortunately, I used both of my super attacks, so I literally have nothing. Got my Kamehameha back. And they're really, really adamant about playing this. And I probably should have just spammed Key Blast. But I guess, you know, uh, the blade was good there. Unfortunately, uh, I got really cocked there because I went to... Uh, let me just back this up so you guys can see, like... Oh, damn, okay. The hell were we? Sorry about that. Like, totally lost my place. Yeah, so what happened here is basically I want to use my alt fire, my key blast, and you can't cancel it. So uh, the player was essentially able to continue playing the key since they were transformed. So honestly, what I probably should have been doing was either spam vanishing kick or try to go for melees. And if I wasn't going for melees, just canceling it. So yeah, I go for the alt fire, and because of that, they're able to plant that key there. If I was able to cover that key a little bit better, I might have been able to kill some more players and be in a better situation. So, you know, if you are somebody that's spamming key blasts, like I was there, it definitely can, uh, you know, screw you over a little bit. So just be mindful of that. Uh, this time, I am not messing around. I immediately go for the super time machine. 
Uh, they get the super transfer now, which is the best uh, plan of attack, I think, if you are uh, dealing with the Rosé. You want to try to get the super transfer out or activate it while the STM is out. That way, the super transfer is as healthy as possible. I think they did a really good job of uh, planning that out. The only reason why you would want to take it is to help your allies plant the final key. So here, um, I make sure uh, to take out some players as well. So I feel like that is something that I kind of struggled with last game. I feel like by taking out players, um, you know, there'd be less people to juggle with uh, during the SDM defense phase. And as you can see, the SDM is like not even really close to starting. So I have some wiggle room in terms of actually like uh, probably should have launched a super attack there to get some additional damage. But I whittled down this guy pretty quickly. I tried to get the uh, the vanish kick combo off the break strike, but I couldn't get this match. So this guy actually gets launched, the other person that just got down. I try to kill him, but this guy meleeed me. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I think he actually gets me again. Yeah, he actually. I think he actually tanks the super attack. I was just trying to get those other guys. He gets me again. I try for the vanish kick, but uh, I think I just break strike a little too early. These guys do a pretty good combo here. A melee into a super, which is pretty good. This guy uh, grapples away, hit him with the Kamehameha, and he's down as well. Uh, now we have a player that's dead. I think that's the guy I was trying to execute. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I would start going for these executions, but I'm not going to make the same mistake I uh, made last time. So I try to take out some more players. And I think I just opt to uh, get the STM to 75. Oh, yeah, I see this guy rising, so I figured just get him. That's another down player. Do I go for the executions? I think I do, actually. I go for the executions just because of where the STM is at. And this isn't going to give me my level 4. It's going to make me one off. So I figured I might as well go for it. So now I uh, pretty much one away from my level 4. I don't know why this guy uh, even opted to attack Zamasu there. Unfortunately, I think he had the uh, the bug uh, where you try to activate grapple, but you shoot or something. And that guy couldn't get his grapple off. So I see this guy is out and about. Doesn't have dragon change. Just take him out. And now there's only one player up. So I'm like, ah, all right. So to be fair, uh, I think the most optimal play here would have been just get the STM to 75%. I had like five players to choose from, four players to choose from to get my level four. So I didn't have to get it this early. So um, I'm not sure if this last player is going to be an ETM gamer. So I opt to destroy um, Area D just because Area D I think is pretty good for ETM gaming. But I think uh, before I do that, I actually get the SCM to 75. I don't want to, like, take any chances. So I get this to 75 just in case this guy starts rising people or grabs a super transfer or anything like that. Uh, they end up not doing that. And I think I just destroy D. Yeah, I destroy D really quick. He has a really quick air destruction, so I feel like there wasn't really that much harm into doing this. But I do mess around a little bit here. And this guy did pick up the super transfer. He probably could have clutched out the game. I did get a little bit cocky here. So to kind of spoil how this match goes. Uh, I believe this guy is running uh, SOS. And unfortunately I kind of get. I just guessed wrong. When they have SOS. If you guess wrong. Uh, and, you, and you don't have a snipe. There's not really too much you can do. This person was in area B. I probably should have went over to area B and key sensed. So I just opted to use the super. But uh, the super is trash, and it actually uh, did nothing for me. So I was thinking in the back of my head, all right, that super attack, you know, should be covering me for B, right? Um, but it's already done. It literally is already finished. So I go to area C, and I guess wrong, and he has SOS, and he's already out of there. He literally is already on the ETM, and he's gone. <laughs> That's how stupid SOS is, but these were my first two Raider games. Uh, start off on an L. Um, I think if you are going to play Goku Black and you do want to evolve, you definitely got to keep certain things in mind. Where is the STM at? How many survivors are left? Uh, you can absolutely try to evolve. I mean, both games, I, I think this one especially got a little more key rust than the previous one. But um, if you are going to evolve with Goku Black and some monster, you gotta, just got to be mindful, again, of how many survivors are left, where the STM is at, if it's out right. Um, I think in the previous game, if I simply would have just got the STM to 75%, before getting my level four that match could have ended very differently and if i went to kill at least one more player uh and that would have had uh 
super trains for having a lot less help in that situation right so that being said boys these were my first writer games with goku black and zamasu let me know in the comments below what you uh, thought of the gameplay what uh, your experiences have been what ranks so far uh, with writer and survivor i did record some uh survivor matches as well but i just want to show you guys uh, my writer experience first actually let me talk about uh the evolution or not evolution but like ranking up here so this is how much i ranked up um keep in mind i did lose a match previously so i was about like i, I don't know i think i lost like 10 percent. so i think i was like a little bit below half and getting full diamonds winning the game uh got me this much i was able to rank up and actually get halfway to a3 so uh getting full diamonds and winning the game uh ranked me up a crap ton keep in mind i am still in a rank so it's definitely gonna be a lot more uh, in A than it is going to be in the uh, following ranks, but I just wanted to point that out as well. I believe when I lost, I lost about like 10%. I mean, you guys can go back and double check. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of ranks so far. Uh, obviously, I'm in A rank, so I think the sweatier games are definitely when I get into S and Z. But uh, I will have videos kind of detailing my progress when I hit uh, S rank. I'll show you guys that. When I hit uh, Z rank, I'll show that. And when I eventually hit Z5, I'll make videos for that as well. So uh, with that being said, like the video if you enjoyed it, comment down below your thoughts and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care, safe, have fun. Peace out, dude. Peace out.